Hello guys, welcome back to Clinically Clear. We will be covering a very very important uh, national health program today that is Vector Bone Disease Control Program or NVB DCP. 1953 they started National Malaria Control Program. By 1958 cases reduced a lot. Program was a success. They thought they can eradicate National Malaria Eradication Program. But again by 1971 malaria increased. So 1971 urban malaria scheme came. 1978 what happened? They slightly modified the plan of operations. 1978. 1998 rollback malaria. Now I don't know why they would name a program as rollback malaria. And in 2003 came National Vector Bone Disease Control Program under the MOF. What is MOF? Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So, what are the diseases included? Not just malaria. It also includes dengue, chikungunya, filariasis, Japanese encephalitis, kala azar. Now, these five are spread through mosquito. Kala azar is through sand fly. So, different vectors. Remember, not all of them under the program are mosquito. What are the targets? You know, Mainly this program was for malaria. Okay, So, the targets is related to malaria. Annual parasite incidence should become less than 1 per 1000. Annual blood examination rate should become more than 10%. This is with respect to filariasis. Microfilaria rate in children should be less than 1%. You should control the other four diseases that is dengue, chikungunya, Japanese encephalitis, kala azar. Then, in 2016 came the National Framework for Malaria Elimination. In this, by 2030, the goal is to have malaria eliminated, that is zero indigenous cases and also to prevent the re-establishment. Once you eliminate it, we don't want the disease to come back, right? So, we want to prevent the re-establishment. So, these are the targets. So, remember annual parasite incidence and annual blood examination rate, what it is, I'll come to, I'll explain later. This is with respect to filariasis, then control other four diseases, then national framework for malaria elimination by 2030, what is the target? Organization, let's go from grassroot level, primary level, what is the center that is PHC. In PHC, whom do you have? Who is in charge? The medical officer. Under him, you have the under him or her, you have the ASHA workers, you have the multi purpose workers, etc. What they do, what is the function of all these individuals? They have to do the they do the grass, they do most of the work, they oversee the fogging, the spraying, they do the case detection, they go do case surveillance, they do the lab diagnosis, you know, uh, blood smear examination, etc. Come to the district level, you have the district malaria officer here who is in charge. The chief medical officer is in charge. PHC medical officer, here the chief medical officer. What he or she does? Administrative and technical level, they do work. They are the administrative. Always in national health programs, the district level is the administrative unit. Then coming to the state level. In state level, you have NVB DCP division, National Vector Bone Division. Uh, uh, National Vector Bone Disease Control Program Division Office. Here you have the State Program Officer. State Program Officer is responsible for logistics, procures the insecticides, the insecticide treated nets, all the anti-malarial equipment is procured, you know, the storage facility, you know, contracts, all that is handled by the State Program Officer. And at the national level, you have the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and the 19 regional National Vector Bone Disease Control Program Offices. Who is the head of the program? It is, of course, the Director General of Health in the country. And what they do? They are basically the planning, organizing unit overall. You know, the top tier. They just overall, they oversee the overall implementation of the program in the entire country. Then coming to the strategies. Now, strategies here, I am talking about malaria elimination. Yeah. Here, I am talking mainly about malaria control in this video because that is the most important. Then, what is the first strategy? Early diagnosis and treatment through case detection or surveillance. Diagnosis, what is the diagnostic test of choice? It is peripheral blood smear examination. You take the thick smear and the thin smear. It is very sensitive, it is specific, everything. Best is peripheral blood smear examination. But 
in north east only in north east we can also use rapid diagnostic tests what do they detect they detect certain antigens histidine rich protein 2 specific for plasmodium falciparum plasmodium ldh antigen specific for not specific common for all plasmodial species so these are rapid tests not that sensitive and specific but still in northeast where resources are limited where high endemicity is there it is accepted so you uh, this is how you diagnose but how do you you can't just diagnose everyone right so how do we do surveil for cases how do we identify cases there are three methods active surveillance sentinel surveillance and passive surveillance sentinel surveillance is only done in highly endemic areas basically these large sentinel hospitals they'll get a lot of malaria patients so they'll submit their data to the idsp project what idsp is i've explained it in a separate video that is sentinel surveillance not that important now let's look at active surveillance now what is active case detection or active surveillance the multi-purpose worker mpw who oversees a population of about 10,000 or 2,000 houses, he or she, the multi-purpose worker, goes door to door in their area and they do fortnightly fever surveillance. Every 14 days, They what do they check for? Fever. They'll go to each house. They'll ask, is there a case of fever in your house? Or between today's visit and the previous time I came, has there been any fever in your house? If yes, then there only the multipurpose worker will collect the blood, will make smear slides, will label it, you know, this house number, so and so individual, this blood is collected from. Send the blood to the laboratory in the PHC for peripheral blood smear examination under microscope. And if possible, positive for malarial parasite, the multipurpose worker will once again go to the same house will administer the course of anti-malarial therapy. Now, what course? It depends whether it is chloroquine sensitive, chloroquine resistant, etc. But the multi-purpose worker will go and administer the course of anti-malarial therapy. So, this is how you do active case surveillance. The multi-purpose worker goes door to door and does fever surveillance. Passive surveillance, you are screening for malaria in people who are already coming to you for health advice or for treatment. So, those who seek medical attention, you are doing screening. So, who will, who will do this? PHC doctors, CHC doctors, hospital doctors, local practitioners, etc. So, anyone who comes to them for any disease, but if they have fever, anyone coming with fever, once again, you will collect blood, you will do smear, you will send it for PHC lab. If it comes positive, multipurpose worker will go give course of anti-malarial therapy. So, this is how we detect cases. So, now you've got, you've detected cases, you've diagnosed them, you've treated them. So, you have a lot of data now. Now, how, what are the indicators from this surveillance? From this surveillance, you'll get certain indicators, certain rates. So, this is very important annual parasite index, annual blood examination rate, slide positivity rate, annual parasite index, the number of confirmed cases of malaria divided by population under surveillance into 1000. So, under whole population of surveillance, how many of them have malaria, how many of them have confirmed to have malaria into 1000. Similarly, there is AFI, annual falciparum index, number of confirmed cases of malaria of plasmodium falciparum species divided by population under surveillance, then annual falciparum index specific for plasmodium falciparum. Now, this API, what is very important is it is the epidemiological indicator. It is basically telling you how many cases of malaria are there. So, it is telling you burden of malaria, it is telling you the impact of program. If NVBDCP is working, then API should be less. That is why it is one of the main targets, annual parasite index. Then coming to annual blood examination rate, ABER, annual blood examination rate. Basically here, the number of slides examined divided by population under surveillance into 100. So basically, there is a given population, multipurpose worker is going and whoever has fever is taking the he or she is taking the blood forming smears and uh, 
examine it under microscope. So, like that, how many slides are being examined in the given population? So, it tells us the operational indicator. Why? If the program is working, if it is functioning, if it is operating, then more slides will be examined because every fever case is being detected. So, it is the operational indicator. It also tells us the fever prevalence in the community because more the fever, more the number of slides examined because of active and passive case detection. So, it tells us the fever prevalence as well. Then, slide positivity rate, SPR. This is number of slides positive for malaria divided by number of slides examined into 100. So, here, out of the slides I have examined, how many have come positive for malaria? More, the, po more positive it is for malaria, that says that every single fever case is malaria now. So, it is an outbreak indicator. It is telling that impending outbreak is there. It is telling us disease is getting transmitted. So, it tells us the transmission trends. It also tells us the effectiveness of control measures. So, it tells us the effectiveness of control measures because if the control measures are effective, then slight positivity rate will be low. So, this is indicators. Next, coming to second strategy. Endemic areas were reclassified into four categories. Category 0, Category 1, Category 2, Category 3 and category, four category, category 3. So, now let us look at it is all based on annual parasite index. Category 0 is prevention of re-establishment. So, malaria has been eliminated already. So, if API annual parasite index is less than 0, is not less than 0, sorry, equal to 0, my bad, equal to 0, that means 0 indigenous cases of malaria. So, malaria has been eliminated. Is there any state in our country like that? Absolutely no. There is not a single state that is in category 0. Phase 1 elimination phase in all districts of the state api is less than one it is in the process of elimination example kerala and goa category two pre-elimination phase in most districts api is less than one but in a few districts here and there api is more than or equal to one example karnataka and tamil nadu here api is more than or equal to one then third one intensified control so, basically, here API is more than one in all districts. This is the true endemic regions of malaria. Here, malaria is very, very high. API is more than one in all districts. So, here you require intensified control measures. Example, northeast states, Mizoram, uh, Meghalaya, Tripura, uh, Nagaland, all those states. So, zero, prevention of re-establishment. One, elimination. Two, pre-elimination. Three, intensified control then next thing is urban malaria scheme basically in 1971 to reduce malaria transmission in urban setting that is town cities the scheme was launched but not all towns and cities api has to be more than or equal to one that means it has to be endemic for malaria population has to be more than 50000 so not some local village it has to be urban Slide positivity rate has to be more than 5% and fever prevalence has to be more than 30%. This is the criteria for any town or city to come under urban malaria scheme. What were the key features introduced in this program? Anti-larval measures were introduced, that is larvicides, larvivorous fish and implementation of certain bylaws, you know, certain laws were introduced to for source reduction, example, you know, in, when you're constructing a building, high-rise building, because of all the cement, you need to uh, put, you need to you know, water down the cement and all. There'll be a lot of uh, stagnant water, breeding areas for mosquitoes. So, so, ta so to tackle this, certain laws were introduced for you know how to do, how to manage standing water during construction sites, basically for source reduction, source of mosquito breeding. So this is urban malaria scheme. Next came tribal malaria action plan. This is in category 2-3 districts, basically the endemic regions, which requires intensified control, enhanced intervention, scaled up intervention. So, here you will set up mobile clinics to, you know, 
go to these rural areas endemic areas for active case detection you will strengthen the health infrastructure so that every phc chc will have microscopes you can do peripheral blood smear examination you will have alternatives to asha workers here in these rural areas asha workers cannot reach you know every population tribal population this unreached population so teachers forest workers these guys are recruited and trained free transport to come to the phc and get treated so these are all certain intensified control measures under tribal malaria action plan then coming to the most hallmark strategy of nvbdcp that is integrated vector management which i'll cover in a separate video thank you for watching